everybody it's eclipsing um welcome back to my channel um as you know there's been a huge trend which is not a new one i remember this being a thing some while ago but it's back uh the sailor moon redraw challenge in which there is this one particular screenshot of a moment in sailor moon anime and every artist that i know online has just been joining this challenge to redraw that scene in their own style and their own interpretations some of them uh serious ones others kind of memey ones i think they're pretty funny so it being sailor moon one of my um previously described as a go-to for doodling i thought you know what well, <laughs> i gotta do it i gotta do it i didn't do it last time so i gotta do it now and if you've been a long time follower of this channel you know that i have i think like two other videos featuring sailor moon one of them is um talking about art styles and stuff and it's just a princess serenity look and the other one is the more classic uh, look that we're portraying today, but it was a um, that one second, ten second, one minute, I did that backwards, but that challenge, uh, which was pretty fun to film, kind of a, annoying to edit, but you know how that goes, as always. So this time, um, I drew her like normal, and it was very fun. Um, I realized I haven't been doodling very much this past year, so I feel like I haven't really drawn Sailor Moon kind of semi-seriously for quite a while now. So it was really great to revisit, and I actually did this one completely from start to finish on my live stream on Twitch. So if you were one of the viewers there, thanks for joining me. Hope you learned a lot. I had a fun time chatting. Um, on and all, this took about three hours, I would say. At least that's what the stream says. I spent a little bit of time on the stream goofing off, but that's always happening in my streams because I can't focus on One Piece art for an extended amount of time. For part of this video, I decided I wanted to make this very informative. Now, I think it's very hard to talk about a bunch of points while the speed paint's going because it's like... It's sped up and it's really fast and um, during my stream I was able to kind of go more into depth about some of the stuff um, but for this video because everything's just zooming by because I put it on like I don't know 10 15 times speed um, I try to put a lot of the major like pointers in like text form it still goes by pretty fast because I want I don't want this video to be very you know long so because it is really fast um feel free to just like pause the video and see like what i put on the screen um i decided to share my brush settings i feel like that's something that people kind of ask me about and i have very very basic brushes like i use mostly default brushes so if you have the program it's probably pretty easy to use the same brush settings that i do i also touched a little bit here and there on like what i'm doing in the process it's honestly like what i usually do so it's not like i touched on every little single thing because i feel like i cover it all the time in all my videos if i decide to put any sort of text on the screen um i did zoom in a little bit on what i was drawing the face and a little bit pointers on colors and um how i do my coloring um i feel like uh honestly to do like a full detailed tutorial would mean having to make a dedicated video for specific things like drawing faces or like coloring and I didn't feel like this was the video to kind of do that. This was kind of just like me jumping onto the bandwagon and being like, yo, me too. I'm here. I'm drawing my girl, Sailor Moon. Look at her. She's so cute. Um, and it's just been, you know, a fun thing. It was very fun to do. At the very end of the drawing, I, I didn't get to record the part when I did the kind of retro filter that I put on it. So it's kind of like, I try to make it look kind of like a screen and make it look kind of like old and blurry with like, I don't know. I don't know how to describe it. Um, you, you can see the effect that I put on it. So what I did was that afterwards I took screenshots in a short video clip of what I did to achieve that kind of filter look. Um, it kind of involves um, splitting 
into three layers for RGB and then like doing some shifts and then applying another uh, texture layer to give it kind of like that screen look. Um, and that's just like kind of the aesthetic I decided to go with at the very end there. Obviously, if you know me, I don't exactly plan out everything from the beginning so I didn't really know I was going to go this route like in the beginning I was like yeah I'm going to stick to the same general color palette that the original screenshot is and then like halfway through I was like you know what no I'm going to make it more purple like I I'm feeling purple right now I think one thing I did slightly different that was kind of new this time for me was um when the features of the eyes Obviously, I color my eyes really randomly every time. I don't really have a set way of doing it. But um, for the lashes, I decided to do a couple like crisscross lashes. I usually do just like single strand lashes as I th throw in a couple of kind of the like, crossing ones. Because um, I saw like a picture of some false lashes online and I was like, yo, but what if, what if I did that? And I was like, yo, I'm going to, I'm going to do that. I'm sorry, that was really weird. Um, so that was something that was kind of different. Um, the hair, I actually didn't have a really clear plan how I was going to implement it. Like, obviously, I have the general methods of doing things, but I feel like when I was starting this, I didn't really have anything planned out for it, and I just went for it, and I think it turned out alright. Um, I feel like I'm always making up stuff with bangs i don't know bangs are just weird man and i you know it turns out okay for the most part i like you just gotta have faith in yourself that's gonna ha it's gonna be all right uh one thing in this video that i typically will kind of do but i don't always show in my videos because i don't always show my post process editing kind of oh my god i don't show my like post editing process it's usually not like part of like the main drawing part so i like kind of like hit stop record and then as i'm just like kind of doing other stuff on my computer i'm like oh but what if i add a like a color filter uh to it and so it's not usually in my videos but i include it in this one uh, because I was streaming it and I was like, well, this is just part of my normal process or like I don't always do it But it's like one thing that I kind of do and it's um, like adding kind of like a hazy purple like pin light layer to like kind of tone down to a darker color palette um, I feel like it really adds that kind of dramatic effect and It could be very fun. Um, I've been really enjoying more like cooler tones in color palettes and i don't know why i don't just like do it from the get-go maybe in case like i want to go back to like a brighter look uh then it'd be like chill to do i feel like it's it's easier to just kind of like apply a darker filter than go the other way um so i kind of included a little bit about that and in fact i talked or rather talk i put information about like the layer types that i'm using so if you're interested in that process, I popped a little bit of that info in this video as well. If you enjoy this video, uh, be sure to give me a little like, be nice, <laughs> and uh, i love to like hear back from you about how, how you like the art, the video, if you actually tried any of the tips that I put or you found it to be helpful. If you're interested in uh, some of the other stuff that I put online, um, any other platforms like Instagram or Twitch, uh, be sure to check me out there. I think those are like my most active platforms. Uh, hope you like this video and I will see you next time. Bye bye!